Hi, this is Henning and Morten from flipnormals.com. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at how we can sculpt a white walker in um, ZBrush. Uh, we're going to use um, fairly basic techniques uh, and we're just going to narrate as the video is playing. Yeah, we're not actually going to be sculpting, we're just going to sort of talk over what, what Henning has sculpted. Yeah. Uh, as you can see on the image I had up in front of you now, uh, it's a fairly detailed image, but we don't. We, we're going to see that we don't actually do the details until like at least halfway through it all. Uh, we start with a solid foundation in, um, in anatomy, and then we move on to details afterwards. So a lot of the time is actually, you're going to see a lot of the time being spent on designing the shape and not worrying about what actually makes this characteristic, like the striations in his face and things like that. Uh, so we start off with a base mesh in, um, in Seabrush. It's a very simple base mesh, it's a very simple human base mesh, which um, can, be, can be modified in a lot of ways. And it's, it's really good for stuff like this where you're doing speed sculpts so you don't have to sit down and actually worry about blocking out all the, the details of the face to begin with and, and the proportions. Yeah. And in the beginning, like you see now, it's hardly been subdivided and it's... Um, uh, we just using just just using move brush here and just getting the big shapes uh, down. I, th I think the move brush is really like often like overlooked when people go in and they really start sculpting too soon, but you can really like push things around a lot and fast with the move brush. So the brush I'm using now is uh, is a clay tubes brush uh, with the modifier uh, assigned to it, which you can find under stroke. Um, and there's something called roll distance, and just set up that, that up to something like 10. Then you get these really nice, clean uh, strokes. Yeah, because in the beginning you get like a lot of striations with the, with the default alpha. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, you can see like just a really quick second or something. Uh, I was checking the, um, the silhouette. You do that just by hitting the B key, uh, and then, then everything becomes black, and you can very easily evaluate mm. the, the sculpt. Now you can see it's just it's just blocking in big shapes, big uh, big landmarks like the cheekbones, the nose. Uh, I haven't actually put in the eyes yet. It's only the eye socket and yeah, hardly that. And there are no details to, to really speak of no. yet. Um, this is sort of the design phase of of making the face. Yeah. And it's still very rough. It's still just going and getting the big shapes, and that, that's that's basically. That's the essence of good sculpture. Yeah, you won't actually see any smoothing going on for uh, for quite a while um, because yeah, there's no point. Well, also when we're smoothing out, uh, well, sometimes don't use the smooth brush at all, but actually just using something like the clay brush, just the default clay brush, because then you instead of just smoothing out details, you're adding new shapes on top, and you're um, you're, you're defining it more. Yeah, you don't lose detail by digging into the mesh. No. You and sometimes you actually you find new things you create by doing it like that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, just going over now, and just, uh, you can see if something's using the Trim Dynamic too. that's just to define planes. It's a very, it's, it's an incredible brush for just getting the design down, just really. Yeah, not just for hard surface, but it's really good for like the planes of the face. And yeah. You won't get lost in details then. Yeah. <laughs> Which we kind of trying to stress is kind of important. <laughs> And then uh, making an ear climb now. Uh, it's uh, it's not we're not going into details here again, but it's uh, uh, now I'm switching to um, the standard brush, and that's uh, really good for like, actually defining some proper shape. Like the ear is mm. very shape based. It's not it, it's a lot bunch of spirals. And when you do have a, these sort of tight uh, brush strokes, it's in the the standard brush is often overlooked, but it's a really valuable brush actually. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, you can see you can see we're going to use the standard brush quite a bit after. Uh, and later in, in the sculpt. But now, so far, we're only like about one fifth in or something like that. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah. Uh, and you can, you can, if you remember the final result, it's, uh, it has all these like stripes on its face. Uh, we, we, still don't, we still don't have that. We don't even have an eyeball. In yeah, it. it'll be quite a while away, yeah. actually. It's still just blocking in the shapes, uh, getting, just defining the overall shapes. I think an important thing to note is that a lot of people tend to, especially in the beginning when they start sculpting, is they tend to subdivide their model really quickly and and really quickly work their way up to the details. Um, but still, I mean, this is still just defining shapes. It's a little, it's a little finer shapes now, but it's still just defining the shapes without adding the details. Yeah. Also, some brushes work better on uh, 
uh, on high resolution and some work better on low resolution. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to stick with low resolution, then um, something like the standard brush is working really well. But if you want to use the clay brushes, you have to step up your resolution. But you still need to keep the shapes really cleaned. And now just adding the eye. The way we do this is just uh, make a make a new a sphere, convert it into poly mesh 3D. Uh, you see the transpose lines to. Uh, oh, before that, going in under subtool append uh, to get this, uh, to get it in. Um, and um, then using. Um, What's it called? Subtool Master? Subtool Master. Subtool Master and using the mirror feature to just mirror it over. Yeah. Which is a fairly effective way of doing it. And you can see how the how the face sort of starts to change once uh, we actually get the eyeball in there because it's a very distinctive shape that you have to sort of work around. Um, especially for beginners. It, it's, it can sometimes be hard to understand how, how curved the eye actually is. Um, it's very hard to do eyes without an actual eyeball. <laughs> yeah. You need some kind of spherical <laughs> representation of it. Either if, if that's just putting in an eye or putting in a, a spherical shape, um, you just need something in there. Yeah. yeah. And now you can see it, it's going over also with the standard brush as well. Uh, it's not just going with clay brushes now, but uh, uh, when you want to, when, at least when I, I want to define a shape better, uh, using the standard brush is, is really nice for that. Uh, we also, you're going to see me using the square I originally used for, uh, for the eye. I'm going to use that for hair later on. Uh, just as a separate subtool, mm. and it's still very blocky. Uh, and also, also just going over now, and just evaluating stuff, trying to push and pull stuff with a move brush, and still just getting the anatomy down. Because the great thing about this is, is, even though it's it's more detailed than the base mesh, it's still not so detailed that you can move things around and redesign, yeah. um, making him more frowny. It's very sad because he didn't. He's very sad. <laughs> And also, it's less than one minute polished right now. And now you can see it, it's using a silhouette view. And the silhouette is really good for it's. It's important to check your silhouette just to see if your design actually works from a few different angles and stuff like that. So. Ideally, your your design should work from every single angle. Your it shouldn't be a three hundred sixty degree silhouette. Ideally, it can be hard sometimes, especially when you're doing speed sculpting, to to make sure that it works from every angle because yeah. usually you design something with a with one view in mind. Yeah, but it's a good practice. Yeah, it is. Also, if your silhouette doesn't work from the view you wanted to, the design isn't going to work. Yeah. And uh, now it's also not just much bones; it's also adding, actually adding like an uh, anatomy into it, like the sternum to the master muscles going from below the behind the ear to down to the clavicles. Uh, and that's what I was talking about before. Uh, actually adding the a second work to it, uh, using dynamesh, and just using that as a basis for the hair. For it's hair. the same principle as, as like the face. It's just rough shapes. Yeah. Find the shape first, and then details afterwards. Move brush first. Yeah. Don't worry about any details. Don't worry about individual strands of hair. Uh, if you do that, it's just gonna it's gonna be really messy really quickly. And it's gonna be impossible to to get the shape of hair that you want yeah. if you start sculpting with uh, strands, basically. Yeah. So for this, uh, I'm using a brush called uh, Clay Buildup. By default, the clay buildup brush has an alpha to it, uh, which gives you a very clay-like feeling, but a lot of times you don't want that. Um, so I'm simply just disabling the alpha, just hit the alpha off under the alpha menu. And this is a, is a really nice way of, of adding volume to it. So The good thing about the clay, clay buildup brush is that, as the name implies, you can just build up clay, you just go over the, the same spot over and over again to really get yeah. the volume that you want. That's the difference between clay buildup and just clay, like clay buildup. Will build up. <laughs> well, this clay with clay will just be one layer. Yeah. So uh, the, the technique here is basically use the clay build up. This is one of many techniques, of course, but it's use the clay build up brush uh, to get the big shapes down, and then use a standard brush to refine the hair. Get the sexy shapes. Get the sexy shapes. I mean, he does have lovely hair. That's a very nice and <laughs> for a white walker. It's <laughs> very fashionable white walker. <laughs> And also, like when you, when you do hair, uh, try to get overlaps going on. Uh, don't just don't just have all the all the strands of hair be parallel. No, because like the overlaps really sell volume in hair. Um, that's really what makes that sells the realism in it. Um, and you don't have to I was talking about before. You don't have to add every single strand. Just add enough strands so it reads as hair. Yeah. You, it's just going to be very noisy very quickly. Yeah, if you add every single strand, you're not going to be able to see anything. But like. As you can see in the video, the standard brush is used for adding the peaks 
and sort of the valleys of the hair. Yeah. Um, hard edges that really sells the shape of the hair. Now just going over the more of the, the main head again, the main design, uh, and just smoothing stuff out, like just refining it slightly more. Going over the with, um, clay buildup again, which is really nice for adding volume to it. Yeah, adding like you can see it, it it's actually not smoothing, but it's it's it is smoothing, but it's smoothing using a brush that's not the smooth brush like we talked about in the beginning. Yeah. Um, this adds some some really nice detail to stuff, and you can see it's used for building up muscles and. And what you can also, a way to do, use it is to hold down the Alt key and then just going over it, just going over the forms with it. That, mm. will, that, will, that will just break it down and smooth it out. Yeah. And now it's, now it's starting to get more specific in, uh, in the face. Like the, yeah, we're starting to get muscles in there now. Yeah, and the nose is almost defined. Uh, it's, it still needs to be smoothed out a little bit, but uh, shape-wise it's almost there. But yeah, more muscle at this point. So uh, I usually break break my sculpting down into two or into three phases. You have the primary shapes, which is like the big shapes. That's what almost what we've been doing up to this point. It's like the silhouette, um, big bony landmarks, big muscles, and stuff like that. And then afterwards, you have secondary shapes. Uh, that literally helps me to break it into. Yeah, two. like it can be quite overwhelming if you don't sort of have a system of following. Yeah. So uh, right now I'm doing secondary shapes. And in the beginning, it was primary shapes only, uh, meaning the silhouette. And you can see now that this is sort of, now we're starting to get into the more um, characteristics of the White Walkers. But this is very late in the process, um, because this is not, like Kenny says, this is the secondary shapes. And this is done without much symmetry, yeah. um, to just give it a more realistic feel. If you want to, if you, the, more, the more character you want, the less symmetry you should, you should use. If you use symmetry for everything, it's going to look really dead. I and mean, you uh, can. You can use symmetry for, like, the further out stuff. But um, especially yeah. when you get towards the center where stuff joined together, that's where you really want to yeah. focus the asymmetry, I guess. You can totally use symmetry for ears, as your ears normally yeah. aren't seen <laughs> at the same time. Uh, at least when you're sculpting it. I usually do it uh, around afterwards, after this. Yeah, around, just, like, move it around. Just over. breaking symmetry. Yeah. Just use the move brush and just break it up. Especially something with ears, because they're so, yeah, like you say, you don't really see them at the same time, and it's... It's hard to do, time-consuming, <laughs> you might as well... Especially if you do two ears. Yeah. That's, it's, it's really just time-consuming. Yeah. Particularly for something like this, the, the original playtime for this sculpt here was about one and a half hours, uh, so you really just have to be economical. Uh, at this stage, um, it's more it's more detail work, again. It's um, getting the really characteristic wrinkles in the white worker's face. And um, using the clay build up again to add volume is great. Yeah, especially when you have something that crosses over like this where you have cut ins and you can use the clay build up to sort of yeah. build up the shape in between. We're also using the Damien standard brush to, uh, uh, to carve into really fine wrinkles. It's a great brush. So it's amazing. <laughs> uh, also, um, a pro tip, which you, you, you saw me, if you were clever, you, you saw me use it at one point, like for half a second, <laughs> if you were really observant. Uh, it's, uh, it's called repeat last stroke, I believe. And I believe it's mapped to the one key. Uh, yeah. And uh, that was simply just repeat the last stroke. So if you want to, if you, you simply want to like double the intensity of your stroke, for instance, uh, I, I did a stroke and I realized that it was too weak. And instead of redoing it, uh, I can just hit the one key and it would simply sculpt it again for me. Yeah, you just keep doing it as many times as you want. It's, it's very handy. Yeah. Another way of doing that is, is the is lazy mouse under the strokes, where you can sort of, um, it's easier to make straight strokes. Yeah. yeah. And also, uh, at this point, uh, notice that the line width is varying. Uh, for instance, the, the lines on, on this side of the face is thicker, quite a bit thicker than the ones in uh, close to the mouth. Yeah, it becomes quite boring if you just use the same yeah. quality of line all the way. Yeah, exactly. It just provides more visual interest. Yeah. And I'm just breaking up the sculpt with the again, sexy scars. It's with really <laughs> sexy scars. <laughs> we just because uh, he's stolen a lot of babies. <laughs> he's stole quite a few. <laughs> uh, it's been caught a few times. So uh, yeah. So yeah, just break it up. Break up the symmetry of it. And this is really where the character enters the sculpt. Um, Getting in like a pose in the face, yeah. or, like an expression. 
And also just shifting, uh, making the, the shoulders not be completely uh, aligned, but making like one shoulder be slightly more angled than the other one can really just add a lot of character to it. And it's such a simple thing. Yeah. It's really simple and it's it adds a lot. Yeah, it does. Even in, in a bust like this where you have no body to sort of give him character, just a slight shift in the shoulder. Yeah. And that was again standard brush uh, to really like get some more details in here. Just, just again refine the the shapes we already have. Yeah, and like the standard brush is great also for something like scars where you just you dig in holding down Alt and then you just refine the sides um, for the regular standard brush, sort of give this sort of feeling of, of skin has been pushed out. Yeah. I know I use that with like regular mode or in the this, the subtract mode simply by holding down the Alt key. Yeah. So I'm going over a lot of these um, like big wrinkles in his face now and just defining more, making sure they're working. Mm. Oh, yeah. What we talked about before with the lazy mouse, um, the lazy mouse can be activated by pressing the L key yeah. uh, for any brush that you have. And it's really nice uh, for high polys work. Mm. Yeah, we need to be really precise. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like a face made out of wood. Yeah. Yeah, at this at this stage, it is really just. I'm not gonna call it the boring part, but it is sort of like the you have like a coloring book and and like someone's made all the line art for you, and now it's just about coloring in the pages. And this isn't the hard part of a sculpt. It's just you have to follow along what's been created before and and just adding some more peaks and valleys, basically adding more contrast to your sculpt. And it can be very very interesting or very very relaxing too. Definitely, it can be very enjoyable to just and, and yeah. This face is is often the face people skip to in the beginning. They before the day actually is, designing. Yeah, yeah. They just they just skip all the underlying work Maybe. because everyone wants to do like the cool stuff. Yeah. And and this this is the stuff that really makes your model impressive. And obviously, especially when you're starting out, this is the stuff that you mainly see in a, in a sculpt. You don't necessarily notice all the design that's gone into it before. Particularly for, for this character here, you hardly see his like his entire character is covered in big wrinkles. Yeah. Uh, so you don't see directly, for instance, the cheekbones and all that. At least it's hard to see because it's covered in. Yeah, but if you hadn't gone in and designed those before, then the shape would not be very interesting. Would not have worked at all. And at, at this point, he's, he's so skewed as well, so, so the symmetry is, is kind of not an option anymore, yeah, yeah. which again, adds a lot of character, because yeah. that just makes sure that you do different parts on the different parts of the face. Yeah. And now it's again just going over everything and taking a second around of mm. everything. I assume we're going to add some texture to it. It's going to be very, very simple. It's not a texturing video of this. Um, but it can be really nice to just add some some contrast to certain elements. Like uh, uh, I usually go over with just black and white, uh, just under, uh, over the eyes, maybe ears, mouth, and stuff like that, just to give some more focus. It's a good, a good way to also add a little bit of, of contrast. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. Because then you know where to like focus the eye. It's like makeup. You put mascara <laughs> on your face to to put to focus on your beautiful eyes. White walker makeup. <laughs> White walker makeup, basically. <laughs> yeah. And again, checking the silhouette now. Like that's important to do, as we said before. Even at, at a late stage like this, yeah. I mean, especially after you've added all this detail, some of it might interfere with with your silhouette. So you need to yeah. make sure that it works. And you can also always go down the submission level and just just modify the overall design. Yeah. So now you can see it's just the, now the model is done. It's pretty much just adding some color to it. Makeup time. Makeup time. Getting him evil nostrils, evil lips, <laughs> <laughs> evil by rouge. By making his entire face light and then just adding darkness to his eyes, you kind of look like a tiny bit evil. Too. Yeah, you do. Especially yeah, especially like the dark spots under the eye. Yeah. Also, just going over and just painting some spots on his face, mm. just to make it more visually interesting. Yeah, you can just help sell the model. Also going over the, the hair a little bit and just adding some color to it. Uh, doesn't have to be much. Yeah, it's very desaturated, but it's yeah. just enough to make it stand out. Yeah. It doesn't take away from the model and it doesn't draw all of your, of your focus, but it still adds to it. Yeah. 
So that's about it. This is um, pretty much how you sculpt something like this. Um, the principles here, we, we hope, are will translate to any other sculpt you do. This should be universal. Uh, it's not a white walker tutorial. Yeah, such. pretty much. I mean, of course, there are some specific parts, like all the striations, which is something you probably would use mostly for a white walker like this. No. But the design part and, and how you do your initial sculpt and stuff is, is things you can translate to yeah. all other sculpts. As long as you do your your design stage before your details, we're gonna be happy with you. <laughs> if you if you do your details before, and we're gonna find you, and we're gonna know. <laughs> so uh, yeah. we know where you live. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we hope this tutorial helped you, and um, feel free to check out our other tutorials. And see you next time.